Hello and welcome to another video. Today in this video, I'm going to share with you some concrete examples on how you can start your own case study if you don't know where to start. So let's start from the beginning. What is a case study and what is it for? Your case study will help recruiters and companies understand the way you work, understand your design process, your thought process, to gauge your skill set, and to understand how your designs have translated into real impact. So I'll structure this case study into three parts. One, common questions that you may have. Second, common beginner mistakes. And thirdly, walking you through my case study and my thought process. So one of the common questions, what case study format or platform should I go with? You have many choices. For example, Behance, Notion, your own website, you know, on Squarespace. I think it's entirely up to you on what platform or format you would like to go with. But keep one thing in mind. Your case study should be easily shareable with recruiters through a link. And also think about the experience that the recruiter goes through when they are reading your case study. So for example, if you know you send them a PDF that is static, then how would the recruiter interact with your prototype? Do you want them to click on a link and link out of the PDF to another link? Or is it better if you place everything in one place, for example, a website where they can just straight away glance through your portfolio easily. So think about the user experience. You are a product designer. User experience is one of the most important things that you should focus on. Keep in mind that you know you shouldn't spend too much time on thinking what to pick. Go with a format that you are most comfortable with for now. Focus on one first. And once you get that ready, you will actually have an idea of what platform or format that suits yourself the most. So secondly, how many case studies do I need to show? If you are someone who has already worked on several projects, showcase your best three projects tailored to the job that you're applying for. But for example, if you're a junior, you don't have any projects to start with, I would recommend you to just make two case studies, focus on making those two really, really, really good, showcase your thought process in that case study. For example, if you don't have any real world projects to show right now, it's okay. You could just start with a mock project from Design Challenges, which I will share a link above here, where I actually walk you through some tips that you can get started, tackle a design challenge on your own so that you have some projects to show potential companies always prioritize the one that is most relevant to your job role first. And remember, pick two or three of your most proudest projects because it's always better to show two or three best projects rather than 10 mediocre projects. Another common question that I get asked is how long should my case study be? There is no hard rule to this, as long as you keep your case study with the most important information that a recruiter should know when working with you, then I think it should be good enough. Always have the problem, the goal, the impact, the solution, and also the design process, the thought process where you went through the ideation, you know, the research, iteration, and also show them a prototype. I'll walk you through these later in the video, so don't go away yet. Next up, I'm going to share with you some common beginner mistakes that I have found while I'm looking at junior designers case studies. One of the common mistakes that I found is a junior designer only shows the end designs. This is not a strong case study because you're only focusing on the end designs while anyone can make pretty designs. How did you approach that design? You know, what made you choose this component over the other? What made you design your patterns in this particular way? Why did you choose this color, this font type? How did you come up with the flows? Did you validate with people first or assume by yourself? Another beginner mistake that I find is when you apply for a role, you did not tailor your case study according to the role that you're applying for. For example, if you're applying for a role in healthcare, but your case study is about games. So how could a recruiter relate to your case study if you are showing something totally irrelevant to them? Try to always tailor your case study to the role that you're applying for. If the role that you're applying for lies heavily in research, always show more research content in your case study. And if the role you're applying for is, for example, um, more heavy on interaction design, you include more interaction in your case study, go through in detail of why each interaction is designed this way so that it appeals to the recruiter more and they could gauge your skill set based on your case study. While you tailor your case study to the role that you're trying to apply for, it has already helped you stand out a lot more from all the applicants in the pool. Another beginner mistake that I find is you start off your case study with everything but you did not mention the problem that you're trying to solve at all. You do not start a project without trying to figure out what problem you're trying to solve. It has to start with a problem. For example, you're trying to improve the customer experience because people keep dropping off from the app. There could be more than one problem statements but try to address that in your designs in the solution part later. 
So never forget the problem statement. Another common beginner mistake is you do not spell check your case study. You do not align things properly in the case study. The typography is wrong. It's all over the place. Images are blurry. Do not do that. <laughs> Always spell check your case study. Always pay attention to the details when you're preparing your case study. If I am interviewing someone and I see your case study having plenty of spelling mistakes, um, icons that are not aligned, photos that are not placed properly, and content that doesn't make sense, then how could I trust you for the role that you're applying for? So let's dive into my process of creating a case study. When I start a new project, right, I will usually have it documented somewhere. Try to make it a habit to document all your design. Well, in my case, I use Notion. I have set up properties in Notion where I have a tagline, company, platforms, you know, my role, uh, anything here, anything that's related to this project. And it's entirely up to you on how you like to set it up, but this is just an inspiration for you. The purpose of this is just to document things fast. You want some way for you to just note down things quickly. You could even use Apple Notes if that's what you prefer, right? You don't need to use anything complicated. So this is where I store all my uh, photos and visualizations. So for example, if I need to visualize this data here, I will do it in Figma and you know any notes that i have i'll be putting it here so once i've done with that i'll just export them and paste it on webflow straight away so recently if you have been following my twitter i've moved all my case study from notion to webflow i feel like i want to tailor the experience of people visiting my site and reading my case studies and webflow enables me to do this quickly and easily i managed to migrate everything in like three days pretty fast considering that i'm also adding new content to my site this is how my site looks like when users arrive on the page the users are able to skip to the section that they find relevant or they are interested to find out more. Recruiting managers are going to look at what's your role in a project, what is the problem that you're trying to solve, and usually they will just skip to the impact. Try and create a captivating photo for your case study. You could make it into a GIF. Um, it's up to you, right? It's up to your creativity. This is what attracts recruiters in clicking into your case study and find out more about your project. In your case study, always remember to include a meaningful title instead of just saying Faith Landing Page Redesign. Uh, what problem did you solve or the impact that you have achieved with your project? So think of a title that is meaningful and effective. Next up, always include an overview of your project. I have included the timeline so that people know how long have I been working on this project. A platform, you know, what platform is this on? Is it an app? And in my case, this is a responsive website. Include your role in the project, whether you are a designer, if you're a researcher, developer, and something that's optional is also you could include the tools that you have used, uh, the design tool, the research tool, customer survey tool, whatever that you have uh, included as well. Another thing you can include is your industry, for example, fintech industry, healthcare industry, you know, gaming. So when you're preparing your case study, always include the introduction an introduction to the company, the product, so that people have enough context on what you're designing for, right? Include your role as well in detail. I've also included, you know, the people that I've collaborated with. So this gives recruiters an example, an idea of who you could potentially work with. They could gauge whether you have worked with people in the past or you are used to working in silo. As I mentioned just now in one of the common beginner mistakes, a lot of people did not include their problem statement in the case study. Always include the problem here. If there's more than one problem, state that as well. Make sure that the design solution that you've included in the end solves these problems mentioned here. So after the problem, share your goals of this project. I have stated four goals that I'm trying to achieve with this redesign. Each goal, I'll elaborate them separately. Feel free to make this into a more visually appealing matter. It doesn't have to be all text only. Think of ways to make the storytelling more interesting for your case study. How you tell a story also says a lot about your capabilities as a designer. This is the most interesting part of the case study, which is the impact. So if this project has already launched, include the metrics. Always remember that. Show off this metrics in an attractive manner, right? So here I have done some data visualization as well so that people don't have to think about what data are you trying to convey. They can just look at the data, look at the image, and they know immediately what this data is about. So it actually cuts down some reading time for people and it's easier to scan. And also if your project hasn't started yet, 
well, it's fine. You can just put the impact as, you know, it's coming soon or it will be launched at a set date. For example, this is a mock project and you do not have any real impact that you could showcase in your case study. What do you do? For example, you could share your designs in a prototype manner to like say 10 or 20 people and measure how these people have decreased their checkout time because of your redesign. Find a way to measure your impact if possible but if you don't have any, it's fine as well. It's, it's not a must to have this here, especially when you're starting out, right? Now, this is the time where you share your design process. I start off the design process by sharing you know, the early ideations that we had. Um, if you have established any design principles in your process, uh, feel free to share them here as well. And of course, any sketches, it doesn't have to be pretty. They're meant to look messy. They're meant to look raw and unpolished. Include your wireframes, high fidelity designs, user flows, research, journey mapping, all that in this section. I've shared how the user testing has been done and also how, how do we consolidate the test results. Always share the findings at the end of the test. It's always nice to include the before and after in your project because it helps people understand what was the transformation that your design has went through. In each final design, don't just show a photo and you know don't describe your designs. So in your design solutions, always include why is the user experience designed this way. If this project is already live, you could ask them to check out the live site by just clicking on a button. If it's in a prototype stage, link them to a prototype so that recruiters can see how your product works. This could be a chance for you to also showcase your prototyping skills if you are new and also make sure when you are linking your prototype to the case study, check if the links are correct. Do not link any broken links so that recruiters don't find any mistakes in your prototype. If you have contributed in other ways as well that is not necessarily related to just product design, you could also include them at the end of the case study and also future steps. So this section could be a section for you to share your takeaways, your learnings, reflections, right? And also any future plans that you have for the product. If you feel like you could have done more user testing, you can share them inside here as well. And I leave it to you to inject your own personality into your case study. Remember, this case study is going to represent you. Don't do what everyone else is doing, although include the necessary information, say your problem, your goal, your impact, your design process, right? Always include your research process, your testing, so that people know that you did not design without validation. And always include the future plans or your takeaways. I will include the link to my case study down below. So keep in mind that these are just recommendations on how you could craft your case study to appeal to the job that you're applying for. It's also a really good way to document your design process and see how much you've grown in years to come. Always make it a habit to document your design process. It would be a nice memory and also it would serve useful in the future. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.